We already know how to connect to 3G with OpenWRT and a Raspberry Pi. But 3G is going away and its speeds are too slow for many applications. Well, I have some good news as I finally got 4G LTE working on a Raspberry Pi running OpenWRT. Let's get to it. Welcome back to Dev Odyssey, a developer's journey through IT, where I cover tutorials and reviews of IT tools and technologies. I'm your host, Orist, and in this episode, we're connecting to Verizon's 4G LTE with a Raspberry Pi and OpenWRT. To begin this video, I wanted to share a foreword about cellular configuration. It's definitely not easy. Your configuration will vary depending on the modem manufacturer and the cellular carrier. Initially, my 3G Raspberry Pi video was supposed to be on 4G LTE using Verizon's network, but I couldn't get that to work on my Telet modem. After enough research, I realized the Telet modem I received in my 6Fab kit was not going to be compatible with Verizon's network. In addition, I went with Verizon because I can get data plans that are more suitable to my needs, such as unlimited data. Before getting into any configuration, I want to share the general process you should follow before buying your modem and deciding on your carrier if you were to create your own 4G LTE Raspberry Pi router. First, decide on your cellular carrier. This is what will dictate the modem that you can use. Once you have a carrier in mind, begin researching their documentation to see what cellular modems they're compatible with. In my case, I knew I'd be using Verizon's network and their SIM card, so I found the Verizon website where they showed you what modems they're compatible with. For those interested, I'll leave the website in the description below. While searching for modems, pick a few and do some pricing research. Some may be way more expensive than others, and others may support different LTE categories. Generally, the higher the category, the faster the speed. As a final note, be sure that you are using a modem that is supported in your region, like North America, Europe, Asia, or global. If you happen to already own a modem, and you want to use it with a carrier, you can do an IMEI check on their website to see if it will work. I'll leave a link to Verizon's IMEI check in the description below. To finish off this subject, make sure the modem you receive has the latest firmware on it and is using your carrier specific configuration, especially if you buy a used modem like I did. This process greatly varies depending on the modem manufacturer. Refer to their documentation for firmware flashing and carrier configuration of the modem. Next, I'll briefly cover the different protocols used for connecting to the carrier. Those are Qualcomm MSI Interface, or QMI, and Mobile Broadband Interface Model, or MBIM. Qualcomm MSI Interface is a proprietary protocol developed by Qualcomm, and MBIM is an open protocol developed by USB Implementers Forum. You can learn more about the supported protocols and how to switch between them by referring to the manufacturer's AT command documentation. All right, now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's get into the hardware and software requirements for this video. For the hardware, you can refer to my prior video on the 3G Raspberry Pi router, as I'll be using mostly the same hardware with the following exceptions. A Sierra Wireless AirPrime MC7455 cellular modem, two Bingfu 4G LTE 7dBi antennas, two IPEX U.FL to SMA female pigtails, and the Verizon SIM card. For software, I'll be using a custom build of OpenWRT I made for this video. To learn more about how to make your own custom build, check out my last video. As for the packages I used, I'll note them in my demonstration. However, you can find them in the description below so you can download them using OPKG. With all that information covered, we're finally ready to set up our 4G LTE Raspberry Pi router. To kick off the demonstration, I'll be assembling the new hardware. Otherwise, to see the hardware set up to this point, you can refer to my 3G Raspberry Pi router video. With the Pi Hat already installed, we'll first insert the AirPrime MC7455 modem into the Pi Hat's mini PCIe connector and push down to secure it. Next, we'll screw in the SMA female connectors to the coaxial cable on the Bingfu 4GE LTE antennas. Then, we'll attach the IPEX connectors to the main and AUX interfaces on the modem.
Now we insert the SIM card and attach the micro USB cable between the hat and the Pi. In this case, I'll be using the USB 3.0 port since this modem supports USB 3.0. We'll place the magnetic base of the antenna on top of the USB interfaces and plug in the USB-C to turn on the Pi. Lastly, I'll connect the Ethernet cord to the Pi and my computer so I can log in. Now let's move on to the software. In preparation for this video, I have already flashed my custom firmware image of OpenWRT with the necessary packages onto my SD card. Let's first log in to Lucy at our default IP address of 192.168.1.1. Once logged in on the main page, you can do one of the following. Install the necessary packages or proceed to configure your 4G LTE interface. If you're using a base image of OpenWRT, navigate to Software section under System tab. Here, you'd first click Update List button, search for the packages you need, and install them. I'll show you I already have them installed by clicking the Install tab and doing a search for one of the necessary packages, such as KMOD, USB, NET, QMI, WAN. Instead of downloading each package individually, you can download all the packages at the same time using the terminal and OPKG commands update and install as noted in OpenWT documentation. Just be sure that you've connected your Raspberry Pi to the internet, wirelessly or over ethernet, so you can download and install the packages. Then once installed, do a reboot for good measure and log back in. Since I have not installed any new packages, I will not be rebooting. Once we have rebooted and installed all the packages, we're now ready to begin interacting with the modem using AT commands to verify it's available and ready for cellular connection. First, we're going to start a new terminal session with our Pi, and then we'll begin our checks to make sure the cellular interfaces are available. Now that we have logged in over SSH, We'll first run the dmessage command and check the output for CDC, WDM0, and TTY USB. These interfaces are the cellular interface and the serial interface, respectively. And as you can see, we have both of those interfaces. We're off to a good start. Next, we're going to interact with the serial interface to issue AT commands. For this particular modem, the serial interface I want is TTY USB 2. We'll access the modem by using the following Minicom command. Minicom B 9600 D forward slash dev forward slash TTY USB 2. Now that we're in, we'll issue the obligatory AT command and make sure we get in OK. Good. Next, we'll verify the SIM card is accepted by issuing the AT plus CPIN question mark command. As you can see by the output of ready, our SIM card is accepted by the modem. Next, we'll run the AT exclamation mark LTE info question mark command, which gives us the LTE signal and other connection information. This helps to verify the modem is using LTE bands. And finally, for this setup, I'll be connecting to 4G LTE using QMI. We'll run a check here to make sure that the modem is in QMI mode. First, we'll put the modem in advanced command mode using the following. AT exclamation mark, enter CND equals, quote, A710, quote. Then we'll run the AT command, AT exclamation point, USB comp question mark. The output of this command gives us a bit mask. According to Sierra Wireless AT command documentation, the 0000010D bit mask signifies the modem is in QMI mode. Now that we have verified the settings that we need, 
we could proceed with configuring the 4G WAN interface in Lucy using the helper package Lucy Proto QMI. First, let's get back to Lucy. Then, we'll proceed to the Network and Interfaces tab. Once here, click Add New Interface. In the window, we'll first give our interface name. Let's call it 4G. For the protocol, we'll choose QMI Cellular. Then click Create Interface, and more options will show up. For modem device, choose forward slash dev forward slash CDC WDM 0. For APN, this may be carrier dependent. Since we're on Verizon, we'll use VZW Internet. For PIN, leave that blank. For authentication type, leave that as none. For PDP type, this also depends on your carrier. If you don't know, leave it as IPv4 forward slash IPv6. And lastly, go to the Firewall Settings tab and assign the Firewall Zone to WAN. Then click Save and Save and Apply. Now that we've stood up this new interface, we should see TX and RX traffic, indicating our connection is live. In addition, I'll run a ping test through this 4G interface to, again, verify our connection. I'll use the command ping forward slash i wn0 8.8.8.8 in the terminal. Great. We could see responses to our pings. Let's move on to the standard speed test, just to see what kind of speeds we're getting. In the browser, I'll navigate to speedtest.net to see what the download and upload speeds I'm getting. Well, that wasn't the best speed test I expected. It's probably because I'm in my studio in the basement and I don't get fast download speeds. However, the upload speeds were faster, so that is interesting. Overall, it's certainly faster than 3G, but I didn't expect it to be as fast as my wired home internet. I also expected the upload speeds to be less than the download speeds, as the CR Wireless documentation shows that both upload speeds and download speeds, where the upload is clearly slower than the download, but it looks like in this case that didn't happen. For the sake of comparison, I went upstairs to run a speed test just so you could see the difference in ping, download, and upload speeds. The ping is quite better in this case, being 51 compared to the 60s as we just saw. The download speed is much better, we're at roughly 5 times faster upstairs than we were in the studio. And lastly, the upload speeds are within the same range, minus a megabit or two, which is quite surprising that I got that good of upload speeds in the basement. This just goes to show you that antenna placement is significant for your download and upload speeds, but also the quality of your antennas will greatly play into how fast your internet is. That covers the demo for connecting to 4G LTE on a Raspberry Pi router. We just saw the results of the speed test, and I couldn't help but wonder, how can I make this faster or better? For starters, I could use better antennas that are outdoor rated and can mount up high. This would result in a better signal for the modem, leading to faster speeds. I could also explore carrier aggregation, where the modem uses multiple LTE bands for increased network bandwidth. Lastly, I could also use a different modem that is rated for a higher LTE category and therefore capable of higher LTE speeds. Or, of course, I could use a 5G modem. Thanks for following me in my journey. I really appreciate it. If you got some value out of this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you like this type of content and other content around IT technologies, networking, security, and more, go ahead and subscribe to my channel and click that bell for notifications so you don't miss the next video. Would you want to learn more about AT commands? Or maybe about MBIM configuration? How about a 5G Raspberry Pi router? I'm sure you want to see that. Let me know in the comments below. Thanks again and I'll see you in the next video.